Shalom Aleichem and welcome to Alnai Smicha. Sometimes you have to stop and think about things that we do very often and realize how many halachas are connected with it. For example, we, we know Hilchas Brachis, Hilchas, all the halachas from Erechaim, that the ones that we are accustomed to. And we know the Rashi Prakim, we know the general rules where they apply, etc. You know that before you, make, before you take a food to eat, you have to make a bracha. You know if you eat enough, you have to make an after bracha. There are some of those food items that become, that you have to stop for a second, they become questionable in a shayla of a bracha, and every time you have a shayla of a bracha, you're running into a shayla of shem shemayim levatola if you made the bracha in vain. So you have to eat or drink a satisfying amount to be able to be eligible to make a bracha. So when you eat, there are shiurim, kazayis, kabeya, kakaisevas, all the shiurim that, that are kadei svia, that are considered a large amount, enough to be obligated to make a bracha. When it comes to drinking, we know that, uh, or we see the people drink coffee, and they drink a, co- a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, doesn't, doesn't take them a minute or two, takes them over 10, 20 minutes to drink the same cup of coffee. Would that be uh, considered as drinking in one time, in short enough period of time, that you're able to make an after bracha? Tea, uh, coffee, the same would be as a simple drink of water. It's a hot day. Every couple of minutes, you're going to a water fountain. You're going to a, 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 a sink. You're taking some water. When do you make the, the bracha before? When do you make the bracha at the end? Etc., etc. That will leave for a different shear. Uh, for now, people in the summertime, people take trips and it's hot, and etc. So I wanted to stop about a less uh, common shayla. And that would be drinking water. We know, obviously, you don't drink water from anywhere. It's dangerous. And uh, there is a concept of gilui, water that's uncovered. There's a concept of uh, uh, liquid in a left overnight in a, in a keili. That, those are things that people know. In the Gemara and Avodah Zara, the Gemara actually says that if, in de- different places you find statues, and those statues have fountains coming out of them. The Gemara and Avodah Zara actually says to drink the water from those fountains is a shaila in Avodah Zara, because those, those, those statues are in some places, originally could have, uh, it could have been a form of idol worship. It could have been a, st- a statue of an idol, and that was the way of worshiping that idol. So in the Gemara, and Avayda Zara actually says it's prohibited to drink from those fountains. You're not allowed to bend down in front of a statue like that. And in Halacha, uh, it comes out that there, there is definitely worse in the smaller towns, because in the smaller towns, a statue like there like that, has a stronger possibility of being considered an idol than in a bigger city, but it's something that you should not, you should take, take, take serious, because la halacha, it's paskin, to drink from those, those fountains is, a, is an offshoot of Avedo Zara. But let's get to a regular water fountain. A regular water fountain has two shilas, one shila of a regular day. A weekday, you want to, it's hot, you're coming in from outside, you want to, or it's outside, you want to drink a little, you want to drink water. And besides for the shayla that I mentioned before, how much water you have to drink if you have to make an after bracha. Now we're going to talk about the bracha rishayna. At what point could you make the shahakal on the water? Because the halacha says that everything you make a bracha on, you can't just make a bracha unless you see the item you're making the bracha. So the water is not yet, unless you press the button, it's not coming out of the fountain. So are you making the bracha even though you don't see the water? And if you're going to press the fountain, so the water should start, uh, start pouring, start uh, coming out, and you're going to make the bracha, guess what? The bracha that you're saying is not on the water that you're seeing. By the time you're done with the bracha, you say, it's new water. So may you make a bracha on that water fountain on a drink from a water fountain. And the second question will be, on Hilchus Shabbos, may, if it's very, very cold, very, very hot day, and it's Shabbos, and you want to take a drink from the water fountain, may you press the knup, press the button to drink some water from there. So those are the two shilas we'll discuss in today's Shia Bikitzer. So first of all, in 
Yes, everything you make a bracha, you have to hold in your right hand. Yes, everything you make a bracha on, you have just to be secure that the bracha should be valid and shouldn't be chas v'shalom in vain, you have to hold it and see it and make the bracha. But in Mechaber, in Eirachayim, Simen Reish Vav, Seiv Vav, the Mechaber says, Ha'oymed ala masa mayim, there's somebody standing there, a stream of water, Mevarech, he's allowed to make a bracha, V'shoysa, and he can drink the water. Afop isha mayim sheshoysa loy hoyu lefanov, it could actually be that the water that you're going to drink wasn't here at the time you made the bracha. This is a new stream that came pu- uh, pushing in and brought this new water. When he made the bracha, says the mechaber, that's not the end of the world. After all, when you made the bracha, you had that in mind, that whatever flows away will, go- will be gone, but the next, next stream will come in. You look in the Alter Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe actually says a little deeper. The Alter Rebbe in the parentheses in Simon Reis Yivov Sif Yud Aleph says, Ubemayim Shaba Mas HaMayim, water that's in the stream of water, Kivon Shehem Mu'uravim Mu'muchubarim, since all the water that's in this lake, and in, in this uh, collection of water, is all mixed, Umuchubarim Viguf Echod Heim, it's one identity, Habracha al kulam. When you make a bracha, you're not making a bracha on what you see. You're making a bracha on all the water. Whatever water will come later is this, the one that you made a bracha on. Af al af al ma shaloi hayelofan of b'shas bracha. Even if the water that you, that you're actually going to drink, you couldn't see, but the bracha is on this whole shtick, on the whole metzias, and the metzias of the water that you you may drink from. That's what the Alter Rebbe says. Now, that is concerning, so what should you do? You get to the water fountain. It's actually preferable to accomplish that you want to see water, and also in a case of electrical machine, you can never know if you're going to make a bracha and, and, and push the button, it could be it's, going to, it's broken. So it's actually best if you, if you press the button so you see that there was water, and the machine is working, you make the bracha, and you drink the water that comes out, whatever, when you're done with the bracha. That's fine, because lekach niskaven. It's all one big thing. Concerning the water cooler on Shabbos, I must tell you that this is not necessarily a shayla that's specifically about water coolers on Shabbos, if you're allowed to press the button. This is the same ongoing big machleik as there are, it is in Paiskim today, if you're allowed to open a refrigerator on Shabbos. There are some shittas, some shittas say you're only allowed to open the refrigerator when the machine is working. Because if the machine is working, you open the refrigerator, you're not doing anything. There are other shittas that say that you are allowed to open the refrigerator whenever you want, even if the machine is not working. And this is a big machloikis. It's Rabbi Shleim Zalman Auerbach, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein himself. There's, there's, there's what's brought in Igris Moshe, where he was machmir. There's brought in his name in another saver that he was matir. But this is an ongoing machloikis. Are you only allowed to open a fridge, open a refrigerator when the machine is working, or you're allowed to even open up when it's not? Some place can held that on top of that, if a refrigerator has a thermostat in it, that for sure you shouldn't be able to open it up, because when you open up the fridge, you're letting in some cool air, and that's gonna the, the thermostat will kickstart the engine. So whatever the motor, whatever you your minig is is accepted about a refrigerator. That's exactly how it should be about a water cooler on Shabbos.